Today on the podcast, it's obviously summertime, so let's talk about one of my favorite spots. Let's head to Mutasync. And I said, uh, we are talking Munising, and in order to talk Munising, we got to bring my friend Corey on. Corey, uh, how are you, first off? I don't actually know that I've seen you this year, so how are you? I'm good, just enjoying summer, um, busy, and you know, getting outside more, which is great, because when you live in the UP, winter's long. <laughs> so, For sure. Yeah. And we are, yeah, uh, how are you doing? I am excellent. And I was just up there a couple of weeks back, and it was absolutely gorgeous. So I thought we should have you on to kind of give people that ideal summer itinerary because one of the things about munising and the up in general is it's constantly changing you and i talked about what happened in covid that half of michigan discovered that there was another half of michigan they could travel to right um and those parts of michigan are expanding specifically munising like i said i was up there and there's a whole bunch of changes that i wanted to make sure we could go through and talk about not the least of which is what's happening downtown which is where i want to start so let's start with what's going on with the breweries because that's an exciting expansion and something that people love to do either you know before they go on an adventure or after either of those things Things. Yeah, absolutely. So we have two local breweries. We have East Channel Brewery and we have By George Brewery. And uh, both of them have significantly expanded this year. Um, East Channel Brewery actually created a second location, which is, oh, wow. I'd say, triple the size of their initial location. Um, and they brought, they have a food, little food court and an outdoor seating area. Um, they're obviously able to brew quite a bit more because they now have this massive facility. Sure. Um, and then we also have by George by George just did a large expansion of their outdoor seating with a big outdoor deck. It overlooks the lake. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and we actually have as well, we have upper peninsula inspired, which is the winery. They recently expanded into craft Michigan cocktails. Oh, wow. um, so awesome. they kind of changed their licensing and they use all you know, local, meaning Michigan, liquors, and have really started to step that up as well. We also had another location open. Um, It's on the rocks, which is right on the highway and it's facing the lake and they have a huge deck overlooking the lake as well. They have a deli connected to it. And so there is, you know, multiple new places to sit outside, have a drink, enjoy the view of the lake, try some craft brews, try some craft cocktails, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the number one question that you get and or I get, depending on who is talking to us, is about pictured rocks. And so one of the things I I certainly wanted to talk about, having just been up there um, and done both of these, is kind of the best way to see the pictured rocks. I know you and I share a similar view on the best way to do this. So I w- I'll let you I'll let you pick which one you want to start with. But to me, if you're going up, I actually think you should do both of these because you get a different perspective by doing either. It doesn't matter the order, but I would do both if you're going up. Right. So, you know, a lot of people, one of the questions that we typically get is, you know, can obviously, can we see everything if we hike? And yes. Yeah, Of course, you can see from the top of the cliff down, but I always try to tell people, imagine you're standing on the top of the mountain looking down versus standing in front of the mountain because the front of the mountain, when it comes to the pitch of rocks is what you want to see. That's where all the color is. That's where all the formations are. It's kind of hard to get a, um, a true vantage point of it from the top. Um, so we always recommend uh, taking a Pitcher Rocks cruise first before you do really anything else, because they're going to take you along the whole face of the cliffs. They're going to explain all the history of it, explain the geology, explain the different colors and uh, why we have the different mineral deposits and which one seeps what, etc. And that's going to kind of give you your introduction to the rocks and of course again you're on the water so you're looking up and you're looking at the faces of the cliff which is again really the way to see it and then you know for the secondary one we think that the pitcher rocks kayaking is you know just absolutely the way to go you are again in front of the rocks and you are it's more of an intimate experience you are closer to the rocks you are you know going through archways you're able to kind of slow it down now you don't necessarily see the entire face of everything because that would on a kayak i can't even imagine how long that would take <laughs> you'd have to be quite the right. athlete yes. yeah, yeah. but you know you do see quite a bit of it and you see it more up close and it's more personal and it's you know more of a quiet experience with nature but they both have their place and i think that people who have never seen pictured rocks 
before they go kayaking, because they, I believe they should do that as well. I think they should take a picture of rocks cruise because that's going to show you the whole breadth of everything. And it's also going to explain to you, like I said, a lot of the history, the Native American history in the area, stuff that you are not going to necessarily learn about or get any other way. And I would say, you might disagree with me, but I would say if you're going to do it in that order, my favorite way to do it is to go the night before to do the sunset cruise because you get to see the pictured rocks and then this stunning show on the way back into the bay. And then you get up the next morning and then you get, like you said, you get to get up close and there is no, for me there is nothing like getting up and seeing those colors especially like the different ways in which the copper oxidizes and it gives you colors that you wouldn't really ex- it's absolutely a must do and to your point yeah you can't see all of them but it's going to blow you away the first time you do it to be that close to things that are millions of years old and have been there for longer than humans have been here which is just incredible to have such a a gem in the state of Michigan. You see see pictures of pictured rocks or really anything. And it's completely different when you are in front of it and facing it and up close to it. And it's kind of awe-inspiring because you're looking and it's just these massive cliffs. And like you said, they are millions of years old. And you're sitting there looking and it's, it's kind of humbling. And it's also just a very peaceful experience. So I, you know, highly recommend that. And, you know, as far as the kayaking goes, there are several kayaking outfitters. Um, There is um, Uncle Ducky's Paddling Michigan. There is um, Uber Yachts. And uh, there is also Pitcher Rocks Kayaking. Now, the only difference between the three would be Pitcher Rocks Kayaking takes you out on a large boat. They launch you off a boat and there's a boat still waiting there. So I will say if you are someone... um, who maybe has limited physical, you know, abilities, it might be, might make you more comfortable. Cause I know some people are uncomfortable to be on a kayak on Lake Superior. And, you know, what if I cannot physically do this? Or also, you know, a very simple thing is, you know, what if I need to take a break? What if I get hungry? What if I, what if I decide I'm out there and I'm like, Ooh, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this. Pitcher Rocks kayaking is going to have a big boat there waiting and you can just get back on. You know, so I think that that is also something that makes it a lot more accessible to a lot more people. And like you said, everybody should try this. And Pictured Rocks Kayaking does a great job getting you in and out. They've got a great system. The boat, the boat, from an engineering perspective, the boat's kind of dope because it does this thing where the boats come on and it's it's awesome. So yeah, I I, I totally yeah. agree. Is um. The other thing that I want to make sure that we touch on, and I know you're not technically DNR, but people should understand that in order to get into the pictured rocks, they do have to do an extra step that if they haven't been up since COVID, they might not be used to. And before I let you go today, I want to make sure that we kind of rehash that you need to grab something before you kind of walk in and go on those hikes. Thank you for that. So there is now a park pass for Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. It is accessible online. You can purchase it online. You can just have it on your phone if you want. You can also print it out every hotel in the area is going to have a printer they're going to let you use you can also physically go buy one from the various different park offices in town and again when you get here we can direct you to any of those um you know there is a variety of different costs and passes i believe the lowest one is i think a seven day off the top of my head because it's changed the last couple years they were kind of they started the fee system and they were kind of ramping it up you know and the beautiful thing about that fee system is that it has allowed for the visitors to contribute to the upkeep of the park so that it's still there 20 years from now when they want to come back or when their kids want to come here um, it has allowed for expansion of facilities and upgrades of facilities, you know, simple, simple things that people do not think about, like a whole new staircase specifically for commercial traffic that comes down onto the lakeshore, kind of keeps on uh, Miners Beach. It keeps the commercial kind of traffic on one end of the beach. It kind of opens up the other end for recreational traffic It's expanded the parking lot down there It's provided new, you know, bathroom facilities. And we could keep going. There's a massive uh, project going on right now with repaving, which they just finished up. So they've repaved a bunch of the roads through the park. You know, all those things are done with this park pass money. Um, you know, funny thing is, and what a lot of people don't know is that Pitcher Rocks is a national lakeshore, not a national park. National lakeshores are funded differently than national parks, and they're actually funded at less of a percentage. And so while Pitcher Rocks has grown in popularity, they have not grown in funding. So they need more employees. They need, 
you know, more um, staff, they have to have more information centers, they need to have more garbage pickup and all these simple things that none of us think about, but that this is all now being provided by these park passes. So, you know, when you come to Munice, it is really important that you support that park so that it can be properly maintained and taken care of so that it is still there in the future. And the other thing that I would say is if you're someone who likes to have memorabilia from your trips, I would recommend mm-hmm. getting it at the parks because they give you these really cool cards that you could then put in a photo book or whatever you could keep. And what I like about it is if you're somebody who loves national parks, there is, I forget what the price is. You might actually know it. There is a tier that you can buy an annual pass for all of them that helps. Even if you're never going to go out to Yellowstone in 2024, you can help support all of the parks by buying the larger pass that covers the entire, entire country. And I think that's kind of cool too. If you're someone who's like, these are important to me. And even though I'm not going to go to Yellowstone or I'm not going to go to Grand Island, you know, what or Grand Isle, I should say, like you can support those things by visiting Munising and then just upping your card purchase. 100%. And, you know, I I do not know that price off the top of my head, but I also know that there is a lifetime pass available for seniors as well. Oh, very For the national parks. So once you become a senior, I believe it's 62. Now I'm I'm not there yet, (laughs) but I will be. (laughs) But I, I believe it's 62, but you can buy a park pass once for, and it works in every national park across the United States. And that's it for your lifetime. And then the other thing too, with that pass, you get discounts for camping and all kinds of different things with that pass. So it's actually a really phenomenal program. And again, you are contributing and to the national upkeep of these parks. It's, you know, as somebody who travels, I travel all the time. I love outdoor tourism. Um, it's extremely important that we maintain these things because, you know, there might not always be tax money for them. So, you know, I think that, you know, if we want to have these beautiful outdoor spaces, then, you know, it is on all of us to contribute to the upkeep. And it, I didn't, I didn't number, I didn't understand the number until this year. Like we have 400 national parks of some shape or size in this country, which is just stunning to me. So your ability to upkeep it or help upkeep it, I think is, is vital. Absolutely. And I mean, what a blessing it is to have those areas. You know, I am very lucky. I live, you know, right on top of one, but here's the thing. I have previously lived in Chicago and while I love Chicago, there's not a whole lot of outdoor space there. So, you know, someone who lives in the city and loves the outdoors, this is the ideal way for you to contribute so that you have a place to go where there is, you know, untouched wilderness in the future. Because, you know, if there is not money to take care of these parks, who knows what can happen one day. The federal government could say, listen, we're going to cut 100 of these parks because it's just too costly to maintain. All right, Corey, if somebody is super enticed to go check out Munising this summer, where do they start and how do they get going? Visit munising.org for all your information and your summer planning. Awesome. Take care, my friend. Let's talk again in the fall. I want to talk about fall colors. Absolutely. Looking forward to that.